Welcome back to my channel, guys. Super excited to be back. I have been away for some time. I've just had a lot in life. Uh, a lot of people here in Bali to visit us and I just haven't had time to focus on my channel and I do strive into bringing content that I'm proud of and happy and happy to do so I just don't want to be you know uploading content to be uploading content so for me I just did this break uh, but I'm back and I am super excited I posted this small post into the community part of YouTube asking you guys if you had any questions for me as I had been on YouTube for a year and I thought it would be fun to kind of get to know each other a little bit more so I got a few questions thank you so much for participating into this little Q&A without further ado let's get into it the first one is Marley Marley thank you so much for writing to me her question was what was I like when I grew up so first of all uh, something to know about me is my mom's Brazilian, my father is French, and I was born in Japan as they lived there for 12 years. So that's kind of a big part, I guess, of my identity and my childhood. We then from Japan moved to Canada and then to France. So I had a very fun childhood, I must say. I traveled a lot and got to see a lot of things. Um, I have a family that's a little bit everywhere in the world. I have family in the US, in uh, France, and in Brazil. So yeah, I guess this is a really, really big part of me as a kid is that I did travel a lot and I was in contact with very different cultures. I loved it, honestly. It's uh, a gift of life and I was very lucky to be brought up in a such an international family. So I guess that's a big part of me when I grew up. Oh, then, you know, what was I like when I grew up when I was a teenager? I would say that I was always pretty free-spirited. I always kind of did whatever I wanted. Uh, always was pretty positive and excited about life. Um, and always, 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 especially when I was in the years of thinking, what am I gonna do with my life? And what studies am I gonna do? Uh, I've always thought of the lifestyle that I've wanted first before actually what work I was gonna do. Um, yeah, I always did that. I always focused on you know, having good memories in life and making sure, yes, I was working at school and I was good and I was getting straight A's, but I was taking the time also to have fun and see my friends. And uh, yeah, I think I had a good balance with that. And I think I got parents that gave me that balance and um, gave me that right to have that balance also. So that was pretty much it. Did I go to uni? I did. I have a master degrees in communication. I got it in a French school that is the French School of PR and Communication. It's kind of what it's called. It's called IFAP. So I did four years of uni. During these four years, I also got uh, to do a lot of internships because it was part of our program. We had to intern. I was mostly in the music industry during these uh, internships. So I worked for like Sony Music. And I also, also was the assistant of a very famous uh, Japanese rock star called Yoshiki from the group X Japan. So I was his assistant for over four years during his touring uh, sessions and I would just travel the world with him and that was kind of what I did during these four years of uni and I was also modeling on the side. So I was doing a lot of things and I also, you know, worked in stores and I just was always doing things, I guess. <laughs> what were your ambitions and do you feel like you're making them come true right now? Uh, okay, so my ambitions when I was younger, I guess, when I was at uni, for example, feel like one of the things that I've always had in my heart was that I was going to be an entrepreneur. For some reason, I've always had that in me and everything that I did, I did it with that in mind. I finished my studies and I unfortunately did not appreciate what I, I it's not I didn't appreciate, but I just didn't see myself in the industry anymore of communication and PR. Um, I turned to modeling and of course I was very lucky to actually be successful in modeling, but I turned to modeling because my mindset was like, okay, if I make enough money, I can then invest it in the company that I would want to build when I would be ready. So that was kind of always my ambition. So I guess, yes, I did make it come true with launching Twin Flame, uh, so my clothing brand. That was always my ambition. And then my other ambition was always to kind of have a certain lifestyle while I would travel where, you know, 
and once again i was extremely lucky to be successful in modeling and so it brought me all of this so yeah i feel like i have made my ambitions from that time come true i of course have new ambitions and it's important to kind of always you know make them evolve uh but yeah definitely i feel like that was what i wanted at the time and yes i am still working on it because it's not a done deal in a way but i did make that part of me come true next question was from nicole uh so she asks would love to hear about your modeling journey is that the only career you've had yes since I only interned as a student, so, so yes, modeling is my only career. When I finished my studies, as I said, uh, I wasn't into working in this industry anymore and I didn't enjoy the day-to-day -day life of my job. Um, so my way out was like, okay, let me try modeling, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I, at the time when I was a student, was a model in a smaller agency. And then I decided, okay, if I'm gonna make this full time, I have to go with the top agency. And this is when I went to see other ones, such as IMG, Ford, and uh, Elite, and Women. And this is when I signed with Women Management, uh, which now is part of the group Elite. Uh, so yeah, that's the only career I've had for now over 10 years. When did I start? So when did I start? I started when, when I was like 18, but I really went into it full time when I was 21, so it's pretty late for the modeling world in a way. How did I get to work with these big brands? So the reason why I was, you know, I got to work with brands such as Louis Vuitton, Dior, Givenchy, uh, Balenciaga, uh, Wells, Chloe, I, you know, I Chanel, uh, L'Oreal, uh, Makeup Forever, all these things. Uh, it's because I was signed with, and I still am. Uh, with a big agency one thing you have to know as a model agencies they come with you know their clients and it is true that big clients top clients work with top agencies it, 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 it is what it is it's the perfect match it's how it works so once you enter a top agency you usually have access to top clients is it my main source of income uh, as of today yes it is and how long do I see myself continuing for? Honestly, I, <clears throat> it's true that it's something that you are asked so much throughout your career. Like when you say, hi, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a model. Oh, how long are you planning on doing that? <laughs> People ask you that so much and you're always like, yeah, how long? You know, it's, it is a job that has kind of an end, you know, like because, you know, physically or whatever, you don't do it for, that long of a period of a time but I feel that also when I look at the industry and I talk with models there are a lot of models that are you know in their end of the 30s and they're still modeling because there is honestly place for everything and everyone um, so for now I don't see myself stopping because it is an opportunity and because I was so lucky to work with amazing clients and these clients still want to work with me why would I say no, you know? So for me, I do not see myself stopping straight away as long as it is such a, an amazing opportunity, an amazing financial opportunity. Um, do I want to be able to focus 100% on my company? Yes, of course. I would want to be like, okay, this is, you know, 100% my company. But it's funny because in a way, when I think of it, being a model is something that's part of me and I don't see myself ever stopping being a model. So I feel like, okay, if tomorrow I have my company and someone says, oh my God, you'd be perfect for that campaign. Like, would you shoot a day? Why would I say no, right? It's part of me and I've worked for it for so long. What people don't see is modeling is not just being pretty and being in front of a camera. It's a lot of things. And it's a lot of things that you learn throughout the years. And I've learned a lot and I know a lot about the job, you know, and I know how to be good at modeling. So. I feel that I'd be sad to be like, oh no, I don't want to model anymore because I have to be done with it. I guess as long as I can do it, I'll do it. Um, and of course, if I don't enjoy it anymore, then definitely I would stop. Uh, but modeling, oh my God, modeling is a very big subject and I feel like it would need a you know, full on Q&A video. I can really give you like 
big insights of the industry, how to get into it as you know, if you would want to be a model, um, the tips of how to stick around, how to stick around for as long as I did. Um, I think I have a few uh, tips on that. And yeah, so if you'd be interested in me doing a full on video and Q&A on my modeling journey, please comment down below and comment the questions. And I definitely would love to do this video. I think it could be really, really fun. Next up is Chris. What got you into making YouTube videos and have you done something similar before? I found your manner very natural when vlogging and it doesn't feel awkward at all when <laughs> you're speaking to your viewers. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, happy I don't look awkward on camera. <laughs> um, so what got me into making YouTube videos? When I moved to Bali, I kind of wanted to start something new, something fresh. I feel when you move to a new country, you're like, ooh, this is me, I'm a new person, right? Uh, when you kind of change things up and change your lifestyle, you kind of refresh. As I said in my first ever video on YouTube, uh, I see myself and I think we should see ourselves as a plant and you need to repot yourself sometimes to kind of grow and grow in a better way. So when I arrived here in Bali, I was like, what am I going to do this? I was thinking a little bit about what I wanted to do. And YouTube was something that kind of was lingering around for a while. And when I moved to Bali, I was like, oh, what if I, you know, document this new life uh, on YouTube? And that's literally what happened. So I was like, okay, let me pick up this camera and let's do this. <laughs> then one of the things also is was like, as I said, I was cutting a part of my modeling career. Um, intentionally and I felt like I had learned so much as a model that I was like why would I scrape all these skills of being in front of the camera and being comfortable and never use them again like that's so sad that I was not going to use all these skills that I had learned over 10 years and then the other big part and I think that's one of the one of my favorite ones is kind of uh, having a voice and expressing my opinion uh, I feel like as a model you're not really asked to do so and it's fine it's not what you're asked for right it's and me as a simple model I'm not a celebrity model you know a celebrity model has a space and I'm happy they take that space to kind of uh, share their values and advocate for different types of things but when you're a simple model like me um, you don't have that right you come to work you shut up you work that's it and I'm completely fine with it. But it's true that over 10 years, I did find it interesting to kind of build a voice now and kind of, yeah, give an opinion, have a voice, be able to express things that I like, don't like, or whatever. Just expressing myself a little bit more. And lastly, I just think YouTube is such an authentic platform and it just feels more like me whereas Instagram can be very fake and filtered and all of that and YouTube is very hard to do so and I love that. I just think Instagram can be a little bit toxic and I feel like YouTube is the real deal into sharing real content and authentic content and content that has actually something valuable for everyone. That's why I love this platform and that's why I wanted to be part of it. But yeah, definitely that was it. You know, just having a voice for me is uh, is something really, really exciting. It's something that I'm not used to. I sometimes feel scared to share my opinion because I'm not used to. I wasn't given that right, you know. So I'm learning, and I've been loving this journey. And then the question was, have I done something similar before? I guess that what I've done similar before was just being a model. You are in front of a camera. Uh, you do not have that many shots where you can ruin the shot. You know what I mean? They're like, okay, Karen, you get one shot to get, to get it right. So you get used to being in front of the camera. When you're shooting for clients, you have 50 people looking at you and you're alone on the studio part and you have to deliver. Uh, so I guess that's kind of what makes this here being me with you guys in front of a camera so much more easy. I've been under pressure way more with clients as a model that this just feels so, 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 so easy for me. Last but not least, we have questions from Quinn. How did you and your partner decide on Bali to stay? Fun fact, I uh, came to Bali for the first time in 2014 or 15, something like that. And at the time, my sister and I, Lisa, had 
told each other like, oh, this is definitely a place we'll come and live. And at the time it wasn't that even developed, you know, like it wasn't what it is today, but it just had this like insane energy and it just felt easily like home. And then a few years later, I meet my boyfriend. Our first day that we meet, I actually tell him, oh, you know, I, because at the time I wanted to start like a furniture company where I would make furniture here and then ship it to France because I had seen so many beautiful things when I was here. And so I told him, oh, you know, I would love to make furniture and live between Bali and France. And he was like, oh, I love Bali. And then years went by. We always came to Bali for a vacation and we've spent some time here. And then in 2019, we had actually had the conversation like how can we organize our lives to be able to live here in Bali part time at least. It was kind of that discussion. And then COVID happened and we ended up, of course, spending all of 2020 kind of in lockdown in Paris. We started talking about moving from Paris and our first idea was Lisbon in Portugal. We were watching a documentary on TV about this French family that moves to Bali. And we were watching that with like a lot of envy, I think, because that night we're like, let's just go to Bali. This is exactly where we want to be. What helps you the most leaving loved ones and things behind for long periods of time? I think that what helped me the most with this is because I was brought up in a family that was so like exploded in the world i was always kind of used to miss my loved ones since i was a kid um we didn't get to see each other for a long period of times and sometimes it was two years or three years and that's how i was brought up right so it doesn't feel strange because i'm used to this kind of dynamic which is not always easy i'd say it's always goodbyes are always hard but it's part of the game you know, one of the things is like I could focus on that or I could look at brighter, at the brighter side of everything. First of all, I am so lucky that I get to share such an experience with my partner and the person that I love. I am so lucky that I found someone that wanted to do such an adventure um, because I know how rare that is to be right on the same page to do such a thing because it's not easy and it takes a lot of sacrifice and organizing and all of that. I have been always extremely careful to not let go of opportunities because they've always brought me so, so, so much. Um, for example, when I worked as a assistant for this very famous Japanese rock star, uh, it just started off with a Facebook kind of question profile and I was like hey like I could I'm available and they're like okay come to Japan a week later and I just left and I didn't even know this guy was famous like I didn't even google him I don't know why I, I was just I just went there completely blind and I arrived there and I'm like oh my god I'm working for such a famous guy like what what is this it's crazy I traveled the world with him and I it's one of the best experience of my life but I went for it you know and I think I never was disappointed when I, I went for opportunities. And today we know we're so lucky to have such great technology where we can really stay in touch with our loved ones. You know, you can FaceTime, you can send pictures, you can really be connected all the time. We're lucky to use this technology also for good things. And uh, one of them is, I guess, we can live on the other side of the world and stay super connected to the people we love. Last question, which I kind of feel is a question for you guys. Do you have specific goals for your channel? Um, I don't know if I understand it well. What I feel that you're asking me is do I have goals in a way like what are the topics I want to work the most on on this channel? And to be honest, I think I'm still experimenting with it and I'm having fun with it. And I just love to film content that I personally love and think that you guys will like. I feel like right now what I love the most is like lifestyle, uh, my life as a model, my life as an entrepreneur, uh, my life as someone that's moved across the world. That's kind of where I'm at. That's what I feel like sharing right now. But the reason why I said this is a question for you guys, it's because I also create content that's for you guys. I want it to be relevant for you and I want to share things that you enjoy watching. So 
please, please, please take a second if you enjoy watching this channel to just make a few comments and let me know what you love the most, what you want to see more, what you don't. Like that's what I, I want to know. You know, I really do want to create beautiful content for you guys. So please let me know what you want to see more of and I will definitely try to, you know, keep on building this channel uh, together. That's what I think it's the best. So that we build it together and yeah knowing what you guys love will really really help me we're done with the question guys thank you so much for participating into this q a and sending me all these questions i hope this was you know fun for you to watch and kind of get to know a little bit more of me and my life um i just felt it was the right time right i'm back in bali i'm back on you know vlogging mode so i'll catch you guys on my next video have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you are and I'll see you very, very soon. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Once again, it means the world. Bye guys.